All right, so today we're working on this uh, 2013 uh, Volkswagen Jetta 2.0-liter TDI diesel. Um, problem with this vehicle is it is a crank no start. Uh, sometimes it cranks and kicks, sometimes it cranks and starts. So let's see what it does here for us. Okay, so it was a start stall. So that's pretty much what it's doing. The occasional time it'll it'll start and stay running, but for the most part, it's just the start stall. So uh, I think what we're gonna do first is uh, hook the scan tool up and just check it for codes, see what we got going on there. Um, customer did tell me they have put a cam sensor in it, uh, and that they were scoping the cam sensor, and then it looked a little weird. So um, wouldn't be surprised if we have cam sensor codes, uh, but we'll we'll double check here to confirm. Doing a uh, auto scan or a all module scan don't really need to do that on this car I don't think we can take a look at trouble codes yeah okay that's kind of what I figured we'd find based on what the customer was telling me here um, so we have a P0341 camshaft position sensor circuit range slash performance and a P3007 cam position sensor no signal um, Okay, so let's just go back and see if we can, might as well while we're in here, just go and see if we can see anything in the data. Okay, so really all we have that's relevant is engine speed, and I don't think that's going to really make a difference here, because that's a uh, crank sensor. I don't even know if they'll display it on the scan tool with uh, Volkswagen. I'm not sure if they do that, but let's have a look. Okay, no, it does show it on Volkswagen, but that doesn't really mean anything. That's, uh, like I said, it comes off the crank sensor. So I think what we're going to have to do here is uh, look up some wiring diagrams and uh, find out which one is the cam sensor um, and scope it and see what the signal looks like. So it's going to be kind of hard to see, but we're looking for uh, uh, a pin, I believe it's going to be 44, this... Uh, uh, green and black wire there. Um, if we go down to the next page. Uh, you can see the cam sensor here. Um, we're going to be after that middle wire. The uh, well, they call it a green and violet on this one. Um, yeah, sorry, green and violet. I, I uh, was looking at the next one. It's the green and violet on pin 44. Um, so now that we know uh, which uh, wire the signal circuit is on, uh, we'll go out and scope it there. Uh, might as well look at the uh, the 5 volt in the ground too, that's kind of important. Um, uh, we are going to be... Uh, pin 10 at the ECM uh, for, that looks like probably supply voltage, um, just based on the other connector, or sorry, on the other uh, component it was feeding. Uh, this one is going to be uh, brown and green 23. So we'll go hook up the scope to those uh, three circuits and see what we right, get. So scratch that idea at the ECM because none of these uh, wire colors are matching up to the diagrams. So what I've done is uh, I've just went and got it right at the uh, connector for the cam sensor. Um, have our three leads on there and I'm just going to uh, set the scope up and uh, crank this thing over and see what we got going on. All right, we have our scope hooked up here. Our uh, red trace here is the ground circuit. Our blue trace is the five volt reference and the green is the signal circuit. Um, so I'm just going to wait until this uh, goes to the end of the screen here. I'm gonna try cranking and see what we got going on. That's good. We got uh, some crank, uh, some cranking no starts, and uh, also a cranking start here on the screen, so we can compare them. Um, let's just go have a look and see what the good pattern looks like here. Took a closer look at the uh, powers and grounds on this thing. Noticed a couple of things. The ground here, the red trace, and the 5 volt reference both left sort of in this area right here. You can see it again here. And you can see it again right here. Uh, that appears to be 
uh, only happening when the engine is cranking. So one of the things we decided to do here was we wanted to go in and take a closer look at the actual signal itself. So I'm just going to kind of blow this up and I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Okay, so this is definitely the starter right here. Uh, this is where the car is running. It runs for a little bit before it kind of stalls out. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and zoom in on a smaller portion of this waveform so we can get a better look at it. And I'm going to go over to Known Good. And <clears throat> this is Known Good Camp Crank. Now, kind of studied this for a while till it became sort of obvious and I just want to sort of show you the pattern here of a crank pulse start to finish or sorry a cam pulse start to finish so if you take this narrow guy right here which is where the pattern repeats so if we kind of go through this I've got a narrow a wide a wide a wide medium and back to the narrow again. Right. So I'm going to go over now and look at our our actual pattern from the car that we took. I'm right. going to switch over here and I am going to zoom in on one complete revolution All right. just so that we're comparing apples and apples. And <clears throat> I can already start to see a problem here. There appears to be a missing narrow pulse in here. So if you remember from the known good, it should have been narrow, wide, 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 medium, and narrow. So the narrow pulse on this thing you know, appears to be missing. Now, having said that, we did go in um, I mean, there's only two things that can cause it. Take a look at my uh, power to the sensor. It's sitting in there at 5 volts. That's okay. If you look at the ground, it's sitting uh, under a quarter of a volt, so that's okay. And this signal is okay, except for the missing pulse. Now, there's only a couple of things that can cause that. Uh, number one would be a bad sensor, which... Um, we weren't really thinking sensor at first because it's it's a new sensor in this car. Um, so what we did was we pulled the sensor out, and unfortunately I don't have video of this, but we took a look at the tone wheel, um, basically with a boroscope, and the tone wheel on this thing uh, showed the narrow pulse. So we know the tone wheel's okay, but we're missing a pulse. So the bottom line on this one was... Um, the new cam sensor was bad. Uh, we put another cam sensor in this thing, a new one, uh, dealer part this time, I believe. I'm not sure if the first one was a dealer part or not. But we put the uh, new cam sensor in, and the vehicle fired right up with no codes, and it's been running fine ever since. Hey, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe button so you subscribe to our channel. You can follow us on social media, shown on the screen here. And if you want uh, more access to more in-depth training videos, uh, more technical, longer, and subject-specific, please visit our website at www.autoaid.ca. Thanks.